What's up you guys? Welcome back to another Code with Kylie video. Today we're going to be talking about Python variables and mutability. What does that mean? Well, you should watch this video and find out. So let's get started. First things first, what are variables? Well, just like in algebra, variables are values that vary. Basically, variables allow you to store a value and memory that can be changed in the future. We can declare a variable by assigning a value to a variable name through the assignment operator that we talked about last time. For example, let's try x equals 10. So here, x is our variable name and we are assigning it through the assignment operator equals and then this is a value that we're assigning it to. So then let's check what x is by evaluating x and we get 10. So you can assign a variable to basically any of the data types that we talked about last week. We can also do something like x equals 10 plus 5 and so then x is 15 but then let's try y equals apples and z equals hello. Well, you can even do an operation and basically it just combines whatever the values of those two variables is. So that's apples hello, apples shallow, apples shallow. And of course there are a couple of rules regarding how to assign these variable names. Rule number one, it has to start with an alphabetical character or an underscore. So that means that we can do Kylie equals subscribe. And we can also do YouTube equals cool with an underscore. And that will be a valid variable name. But watch what happens when we try to start it with a number. It gives us an invalid syntax error. And basically this message is saying, if we try to evaluate that, that's not something that Python can actually read. That's what invalid syntax means. It means Python has no idea what you're trying to say here. All right, rule number two, variable names are case sensitive. That means a variable Karen and a variable Karen are two different variables. So for example, if we take Karen equals anti-management and then we have Karen equals the manager. Those two are both valid and now let's see what happens when we evaluate Karen anti-management. What about Karen the manager? So basically capital letters matter when you're naming your variables. Okay, and they can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores. That means no special characters. So we can't just toss a bunch of dollar signs in there. Uh, let's use the example chain smokers because chain smokers, I love chain smokers. So chain smokers equals awesome. All right, that's valid. Let's evaluate chain smokers. Cool. Now, what about chain? but then we use fives as S's. Woo, okay, equals cool. Okay, so let's evaluate chain smokers, but with fives as S's. That looks like a valid variable name to me. Okay, but now let's try some dollar signs. So chain dollar sign, moker dollar sign equals valid and no we get an invalid syntax error so unfortunately we cannot replace all of our s's with dollar signs okay so those are basically the naming conventions for variables as long as you follow these three rules you will probably hopefully never run into errors with your variable names in python let's talk a little bit about like what in the world the computer's thinking when you're trying to assign variables. Okay, when you declare and assign a variable like x equals five, basically you're telling the computer to store a value somewhere in memory and then have that variable name x point to that value, five. 
And then you can also do something like y equals x. And so then in this case, y points to 5. When we reassign the variable name by assigning it to a new value, such as x equals cake, then I'm actually replacing the pointer for x to point to a different value in memory. So x is no longer 5. But in this case, we'll notice that y is actually still pointing to 5. Now that brings me to a different topic, mutability. What in the world is mutability? Basically, mutable means can be changed. And mutable data types are like lists, dictionaries, and sets. Whereas immutable data types, well, those can't be changed. So those include numbers, boolean, strings, and tuples. Now, what exactly do I mean by can and can't be changed? Every single time you want to add a letter to your string or add an item to your list, do you have to recreate that entire list or can you just edit it? And basically mutable data types, you can just edit. You can just say list.append and you can just add something right into the original list. Whereas something like a tuple, if you wanted to add a value to the end of a tuple, you would have to recreate that entire tuple and make a copy with the change inside. So let's take a look in terminal in this Python shell, what exactly I mean by mutability. As I mentioned, lists are a kind of mutable data type, whereas tuples are not. And lists and tuples are very similar, right? In our last video, we talked about how the difference between them is whether or not they are mutable. So I'm gonna show you an example of how they are actually different. So if I have a list, s equals one, two, three, and I wanna change the second item in this list to the value five, I can do that by indexing into this list and changing that value. So if I do s1 equals 5, and keep in mind that Python, we use zero indexing, which means that in a list, this item is at the zeroth position, this is at the first, the oneth position, and this is the two position. So before I do that assignment, let me just prove that the indexing is correct. So s1 should give me two. That's what it does. So s1 equals 5. And now let's take a look at what S is, one, five, three. And this is because we're taking that original list, one, two, three in memory, and we're just taking out that two and replacing it with a five. Now let's take a look at what would happen if this had been a tuple instead. So T equals one, two, three. Well, we can still index into this tuple. So if we want the second item in the list, we have to index at one. So we can see that you know, we can still index into it and we get two, which is the correct value. But now let's try editing this tuple. So T1 equals five. And we actually get an error because tuples, you cannot change. They are immutable. In order to actually create a tuple that's one, five, three, we have to go in and make another copy of this in memory. So now, T is 153. And same thing for strings. Whenever you wanna add letters to a string, you're actually making another copy of that string. So if I do string equals string, okay, so string is equal to the value string. If we wanna add an S to the end of string, then we can do string equals string plus the letter S, right? And so we get strings. And notice that here, we're creating a new value in memory and we're moving the pointer and reassigning the original string variable name to the new value strings. And actually, quick little tip, a different assignment operator that you can use as a shortcut for this notation, we can do string plus equals s. And that's just shorthand. See, it adds it has the same effect. So like if we do x equals one and then we do x plus equals one, that's basically saying x equals x plus one, which is two. Cool. And keep in mind here that numbers are also immutable. So whenever we do this, we are first assigning x to one in memory. And then when we do x equals x plus one, we're reassigning that variable to the value two. 
And so you might be wondering, like, why does it even matter? What is the difference between lists and sets? Like, why does it matter if something's mutable or not? Basically, the answer to this is because immutable objects are typically expensive to change because every single change requires a copy of what already exists. If we have a list of objects and we want to keep adding things to this list, for example, if we run an ice cream truck and every single time we sell ice cream, then we want to add that value into our list, the value of the ice cream into our list. Well, we don't know all of those ahead of time, right? So this list is gonna keep expanding. And if we were to use a tuple, then every single time that we wanna add a value, we have to reassign the entire tuple and make a copy, which is kind of annoying. So that's why, you know, whenever you want to change the size or the content of an object, you should use a mutable data type. You might be wondering why in the world would I ever use a tuple over a list? Well, this comes from the fact that a tuple you can't change. If you have a collection of values that you just want to iterate over, like you want to go through each of those over and over again, then it's good to use a tuple because then you wouldn't accidentally edit any of that collection, right? Like if it were a list, you could accidentally insert different values, you could accidentally replace values, whereas a tuple you can't. And so it just makes your code a little bit safer if you can't change the values that aren't intended to be changed. All right, so now we know what mutability is. I just have one last example to show you guys about the power of variables and mutability. So right now I'm gonna create a new variable name and I'm gonna call it my list. And with my list, I'm going to assign it to a list A, B, C. Okay. Now I'm also going to create a new list, your list, but I'm gonna say your list equals my list. So right now our lists are gonna be equal, right? Because we're assigning it to the same value. What happens if I go into my list and I change the second object in my list to Z? So now my list is A, Z, C. In this diagram, we notice that the pointers are still pointing to the same object, right? Because all we did was edit it. So if we actually look at your list, it's A, Z, C. So that's it for our lesson on variables and mutability. Make sure you guys join me next video. We'll be talking about conditionals, which are things like if, else if, and else. So then you'll be able to add some logic into your code. See you guys next time.